So I wanted to share with you seven strategies that I hope might be helpful, that have informed my thinking and might be useful to you. One of the things that I realized is that for so many of us, what is lacking, what is profoundly lacking in our lives is white space. In a very literal sense, for most of us, if you look at your calendar, you're probably going to see a sea of blue, literally white space, time that is unspoken for, is probably pretty scarce. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it has its consequences. A few years ago, I interviewed David Allen, and he told me something interesting. He said, it doesn't take a huge amount of time to have brilliant ideas, but what it takes is space. It's almost like a Zen koan if you roll it around in your head. But it's true, right? I mean, we all know if you have to come up with some innovation, some new idea, it's not, oh, I need to set aside 40 hours and bang my head against the desk. That is not how the brilliant ideas come, right? It comes sometimes in a moment, in a flash. You're in the shower, you're walking, you're jogging, you're doing something. But what enables it to come is having the space to make the connections. We will never get that space if we are constantly pulled down by details, by worries, by ruminations, and by back-to-back -back meetings that are so intense we feel we can never catch up. We need white space if we are going to have the mental bandwidth to be able to even begin to engage in long-term thinking, to be able to step back enough from our present circumstances to entertain those questions. Number two, if we are ever to truly excel at something, if we're willing to take what's necessary to be great, we have to be willing to choose what to be bad at. What are we willing to give up to get there? Most of us refuse to choose, and by not choosing, we stay average. That's when I learned that long-term thinking is in a lot of ways a test of character. It's a test of the courage to make choices. I'll give you an example. There was a bank that was actually a very successful bank. And this bank, they did something interesting. Unlike almost every other bank, these guys stayed open really late. They were open till 8 o'clock weeknights. They were open on weekends. Fantastic. Their customers loved it, obviously. But why doesn't every bank do it? You probably know the answer, which is that it's expensive. But what this bank did, they found a way to pay for it. The way they paid for it is they took the savings rate, the, the rate on savings deposits, they shrunk it down. They made it almost non-existent. It was kind of terrible. <laughs> but to their customers, it didn't really matter. It was a lot more important. It was a lot more salient to be able to go to the bank at 7.30 at night. But most companies are not willing to make those hard choices, and most people are not either. Number three, we also have to balance our portfolio. For most of us, if you literally know one thing about personal finance, what you probably know is that it is a bad idea to put all your eggs in one basket, right? You don't want to own one stock. Most people think that's a pretty bad idea. You want to balance your portfolio. You want to have some of your money in cash and some of your money in moonshots. So often, we tend to just focus in. We have our day job. Okay, we're doing our day job. The rest of our time might be taken up with family or other responsibilities. I want to urge you to think about carving out time. Maybe 20% is too much. Fine. You can find 5% but to think about what your speculative long-term activity is. What is your learning edge? Where are you growing? Something that comes up a lot 
when it comes to long-term thinking and, and pursuing long-term projects is this question of when and whether to quit. It can almost feel like you're going into a dark tunnel, right? Because you don't really know what's going on. You don't really know for sure if it's working. In the midst of developing an exponential technology, there is something that they dubbed the deception phase. Now, what is that? If you're moving forward with digital photography and you're able to get it from 0 0.01 pixels to 0 0.02 pixels to 0 0.04 pixels, that's actually kind of amazing, right? 0 0.08 moving on and on. It's actually kind of amazing progression. It's doubling, it's doubling, it's doubling. But the problem is that it's still invisible to the naked eye. The world around you, unless they are looking very closely, they can't tell the difference. And you know, or you hope, you think you know that you're making progress. But it's often very, very hard to drown out the voices of all the people around you saying, Ugh, it's so overblown. That's the deception phase. Once we make enough progress to get from one to two to four to 16, all of a sudden people start to say, whoa, where did that come from? It's been doubling all along. They just couldn't see it. But for so many of us, if we're working on a project that's important to us, if we are building a career, things take time. Number five, strategic patience. Sometimes things do take a while, and that can be exceptionally annoying. <laughs> I don't like it that they take a while sometimes, but you know what? Being mad at the seed does not make the seed grow faster. It takes however long it takes. Jeff Bezos was interviewed, and they asked him, what is it that is Amazon's competitive advantage? Why is Amazon so successful? And what he said, I think, is quite powerful. He said, Amazon is willing to invest on a seven-year time frame. If it takes seven years for something to show a profit, it's okay. He said, our competitors are only willing to invest on a three-year time frame. They have to turn a profit within that time frame. If they don't, they're going to scrap it. They're not even going to try it. That is the competitive advantage. If we can be willing to outweight and outlast the people around us, if we can be willing to endure the deception phase for longer, it enables us to tackle bigger, harder, more meaningful, more strategic problems. Number six, fail fast. We know that failure in many places around the world is stigmatized pretty heavily. You get one chance, you blow it, all right, sorry, no more chances. It's also important to recognize that something is not a failure until you call it. It's not a failure until you stop trying. The last point that I wanted to make is that as we think about our own long-term future, our own long-term vision, in a lot of ways, the North Star that we can look to is a really simple question. What kind of person do you want to be? This is a friend of mine. Her name is Alyssa Cohn. I write about her. Alyssa, maybe like some of you guys, was a huge Hamilton fan. When she learned that Lin-Manuel Miranda had a new side project, they created an academy. It was a training program to teach regular people how to do freestyle hip-hop rap just like the performers. She immediately said, I'm in. That sounds great. She shows up for class, and when she shows up, she realizes it's Alyssa and about 20 
guys who are all about two decades younger than her and who are all extremely good rappers. <laughs> After the first class, she emailed the instructor. And she said, I'm really sorry to do this. I feel like I should withdraw. I, I, it's just, you know, I don't fit in. I don't, I don't think I can do this. And he wrote back to her with some incredibly wise words. He said, Alyssa, the goal is not to turn you into a professional rapper. The goal is to help you become a more creative and uninhibited person. She thought about it, and she realized, oh, right, that is my goal. <laughs> she spent two months every Monday night taking the hip-hop, improv, beatbox, rap classes. And just before the world shut down in 2020, she gave a concert performance with her class, and she had friends from all over see her perform improv rap. But ultimately, the question that I think all of us can ask ourselves as we think long-term, as we think about our vision for our own lives and how we want to lead them, is what kind of person do you want to be? What are you optimizing for?